So it's not often that a keyboard comes in and wows me to the point where I can't wait to share this with you guys. And the Grid 650 is that keyboard that came in recently. Now the Grid 650 already ran, so this group buy is no longer purchasable, but I hope they do another rendition of this board soon. I know you guys can probably pick this up on Mech Market, but it's just something that I want to talk about today just because I enjoyed the board that much. Now, usually when keyboards come out and they have a lot of modularity to them and lots of parts that you can pick up, I usually only pick up one or two things that really pique my interest. In this case here, I, I wanted to pick up all of them. So I picked up a few modules and I picked up the actual base keyboard itself, obviously, and I had a blast building this thing. This thing was a lot of fun to build up. And for a bit of background on the Grid 650, it's the newest addition to the Grid series, which the old one you might have seen on Random Frank P's channel. It had that peak module, the Grid 600. I have one as well with the button module over here. And even the Grid 600 was just an amazing looking keyboard, so I just could not wait to get my hands in the Grid 650. Now, for anyone interested, I did use glow-in-the-dark switches for this, which I'll show off later in the video. They are absolutely impressive. I, I built them up with unwipe stems, and they're just fantastic. Like, they're really, really, really smooth. And this keyboard has a lot of features in it that I can't wait to show you guys in the video, but for now, let's just show you guys the box and the packaging. And this is the Grid 650. Now I left the array module on it right now, which states, hi Alexander, you are amazing, which thank you, I appreciate that keyboard. Now this keyboard has a lot of customizability to it, and the modular piece being this top piece over here comes in a variety of styles. Now I did pick up two additional pieces myself, being the flash module, which is an RGB strip, as well as the peaks module, which honestly looks fantastic. You can see that it has that fastening on the top of here. It looks great. But for now, I'm really liking the array module. I like being told that I'm amazing all the time. It makes me feel good. But I was genuinely very impressed with this keyboard from the unboxing experience all the way down to the build itself. I was really, really happy with it. Now the boxes sport this very, very clean look, which I really, really appreciate. Gives you a bottom and a top piece over here as well. And the modules came in their own boxes to avoid any damage in shipping, which was pretty nice too. But overall, a pretty clean experience. Now I did order most of my modules in this rose color, which I kind of thought it would have more of a gold tone to it, at least from some of the images, that's what I was thinking it would come like, but I'm not unhappy with it. Now, like I said, there's a lot to this keyboard, and one of those things is like a USB pass-through, a USB-C, as well as a Bluetooth toggle. And one of the other really cool things is you can set some profiles for this. I'm not too sure how to go in and edit all this stuff, to be honest. I haven't actually gotten to that point yet, but there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. I'm pretty sure this is all wrong though. It is not September 1st, nor is it Wednesday. You can even get this to be a hardware monitor, which I really want to get that set up. So maybe I'll do that later on. But honestly, everything about this keyboard just screams premium to me, and I'm very happy about it. Even the bottom piece looks really nice. Like, I have to admit, this looks really pretty. It's very well designed, and I really appreciate that. But now I'm going to talk about the internals, which is pretty interesting. Now, like I was saying, the keyboard's internals are very interesting. One of the big things that I saw right away when opening this was the large amount of foam at the bottom. And they do also have a felt inlay, which could sound a bit different. I know the original one used felt, but this one here, I opted just to leave the foam. Now, the use case of the foam at the bottom is to help make the case not as hollow. Uh, and I think it does a pretty good job, honestly. I'm not totally, totally in love with this stacked foam type of thing. I feel like just one solid piece would have been better, but it does add some modularity to it. So if you don't want all the pieces, you can take some of it out. And now for one of the interesting parts here being the actual PCB and plate and all the good stuff that you find inside the keyboard. And man, there was a lot of screws when I opened this. Like, there were screws literally attached to all the PCB points over here as well as the plate. And I was a little confused of what to do here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, and I do feel like the gasketing system on this is a bit lackluster. This feels more like an afterthought after they built the Grid 650 and wanted to just add gasketing. Now, I'm not mad at it. It still does its job of isolating the plate. However, I do feel like the implementation on this isn't my absolute favorite. Now, first of all, the gaskets are placed in the aluminum plate, which makes sense. It's touching the case, it's to isolate any of that vibration, but what doesn't make sense now is these PCB points are actually still touching the case. So you still get some of that sense of vibration, which to me just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, another really odd part about this gasket system is these screw points over here. Now, these screw points are surrounded by washers, which is supposed to help with some of that vibrations. However, I'm not in love with the idea. This is essentially like a hybrid top mount slash gasket mount. And this ends up making the typing experience feel a little bit stiff. But do keep in mind, a stiffer experience isn't always a bad thing. Uh -huh. And that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the PCB and plate assembly. I do feel like, again, this was more of an afterthought. However, I still appreciate the gasket implementation. Now, swapping out these modules is pretty easy. It's not as easy as the Mode 65 with those back pieces, but it's only four screws and a cable. And here's the cable that you end up taking out over here, and this cable's a little bit tricky to take out, so just be patient with it.
And if you guys are building one yourselves, just make sure these cables sit nicely inside the case before you close everything back up. Carefully flip it around and put your screws back in. And there we have it, we have a new module installed. Now I don't love the way the black looks with this particular set, but I mean, it still looks really cool, especially if we plug it in here, which we will in a second. And the RGB control is actually right on the back over here. So if you guys want it to, you guys can fiddle around with the RGB without having to actually go into a program for it, which is pretty nice. I do appreciate that. And now we'll do a quick little sound test of the keyboard and the full sound test will be at the end of the video. And as you guys heard, it has a really nice sound profile and I quite enjoyed my time with the Grid 650. I think it's a great looking keyboard and has tons of customizability with that modular top piece. It did have some weird internals, which I, again, I don't really fully understand myself, but honestly they work and I can't really be mad at that. And I wanted to show you guys one more thing that went inside this keyboard that was a bit nostalgic to me and I'll show you guys right now. And the thing I wanted to show you guys is these switches. Now these things are incredibly smooth once they're put together. These are a glow-in-the-dark housing found from the Nightwalker series. The Umwipe stems from the Invert 2.0s found on Drop, as well as a 56 gram spring, and these are filmed and looped. And like I was telling you guys, these things are buttery smooth. These are probably one of the smoothest switches that I've actually had the pleasure of using so far, and I quite like them. I can't wait to build more of these to put in other keyboards. But the really, really cool thing about these things is they glow in the dark, which I'm gonna show you guys right now because this just makes me so happy. Now, unfortunately, this PCB does not offer per key RGB because I'm pretty sure that would actually help charge these switches. But for now, I'll just shine a light over it for a few seconds and I'll turn off the lights and show you guys what these things look like. Now, obviously this is pretty gimmicky, but honestly, it's such a cool addition to having a switch. It really didn't affect the switch at all other than making it glow in the dark. So I don't know. I was pretty impressed by these. They definitely brought a smile to my face. And at the end of the day, that's what this hobby is supposed to be. It's supposed to make us happy. And if you guys want to make these switches yourselves, I'll show you guys all the ingredients I use for this Franken switch. And first up from the Nightwalker series of switches, we do have the Solaris switch. Now these are a tactile switch, which means we will need to stem swap them to make them linear but this is where we'll get our glow-in-the-dark housings from. Next up, I use the Inver version two umwipe stems. Now you can also find umwipe stems if they're not available on drop anymore on 415 keys. I don't know how those ones there would perform versus the ones from Inver, but they should be generally the same thing. I use some 205G0 loop as well as some Duroc films. Now I did not like the springs in these one bit. They use a fast spring, which is just not my cup of tea, but please use whatever spring you guys prefer. And I ended up going with 56 gram springs from Novel Keys. And we end up making these switches into these, which have the inverse stem filmed and lubed. And these end up glowing in the dark, at least the housing does, and they end up feeling and sounding pretty damn good. And to sum it up, the Grid 250 was a pretty awesome build. And again, I know this keyboard is off group by right now, but I just couldn't help but share this with you guys because I had such a fun experience building the Grid 650, as well as using those glow-in-the-dark switches. And there are a few other things I didn't cover about the Grid 650, like it has an indicator on the front for the caps lock button, as well as a USB socket on the back, which you can put like a mouse receiver in, which I thought was a nice touch. And I've actually used it and it works really, really well. And if you guys enjoyed this type of content, please let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe, like it, do whatever you guys have to do, and see you guys later. Peace.